Beloved in Christ, thank you very much for joining me on the Healing Streams Reflection. The title for today's post is Gratitude Makes Us Joyful. Gratitude Makes Us Joyful. Some people think Christians should always be smiling and happy. And something is wrong if they aren't. Don't confuse happiness with joy. Happiness comes with happy circumstances. Joy wells up deep inside our soul as we learn to trust God. Joy does not mean that we are never sad or that we never cry. But joy is a quiet confidence, a state of inner peace that comes from God. Life's troubles will rob us of our happiness. But they can neither rob us of the joy God gives us as we turn in faith to Him and seek His face. Therefore, it is very important for you and I to understand that it is the joy of the Lord that gives us strength. But in the midst of this, why do you think many people are blind to the many blessings that God daily showers upon us? They wake up each morning to see the shining sun and do not give thanks to God. They hear the bears chirping and see beautiful flowers and trees, but they don't give it a moment thought that God has given those blessings and given them the sense to enjoy them. They grumble about having to eat the same rice, maize, plantain, and yam, etc. Forgetting that many will gladly exchange places with them and eat anything for breakfast. They complain about their jobs and lack of money, forgetting that many will be grateful just to have a job or even to have the bodily strength to go to work and earn income to take care of family. The fact is, whether you are a Christian or a non-Christian, God has blessed you far more than you realize and far more than you deserve and therefore they need to understand how to respond properly to God's abundant blessings. Also to be aware of God's blessings on your life or take credit for his blessings as if you end them by your own efforts will be to insult or disrespect God. What do you think of these two responses, the proper and improper, beautifully illustrated or explained for us in the story of Jesus cleansing the ten lepers in Luke chapter 17 verse 11 to 18? In Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to 19, Luke tells us that now it happened. As he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men, who were lepers, who stood afar off. Verse 13. 
of Luke chapter 17. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice, glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Verse 90, And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Beloved, here we see Luke picking up the path and journey path and of Jesus get going towards Jerusalem where he meets with his appointed destiny. He was making his final trip to Jerusalem but when he was getting ready to enter a village near the border of Samaria and Galilee he enters the village and encounters ten leprous men. According to the law, they stood at a distance, but they recognized Jesus and cried out to him in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. The 12 to 13 verse of Luke chapter 17 tells us, Notice that the lepers kept their distance. Leprosy in the Bible is a contagious, transferable or transferable skin disease. And the person was deemed unclean. And they could no longer be part of civilized society. Leprosy, attacking the body, leaving sores, missing fingers, and missing toes, damaged limbs. It is assuredly a most horrible disease. And so, they had to leave outside the town to ensure they did not infect others with the disease. They had to constantly keep their distance and cry out unclean, unclean, unclean. The emotional pain of a leper, however, must have been even worse than the physical pain. The leper was removed from his family, from his community. Lepers tended to roam together looking for food and to beg for help across the way. And yet, in this account, ten lepers encounter Jesus. Beloved, stop for a moment and put yourself in the shoe of these lepers. Needless to say, this was a depressing and demeaning kind of life adding with it potential social and physical pressures. They hardly looked human after the disease had been allowed to run its course for a long time. This is what the ten lepers Jesus came across were probably like living together in a kind of camp outside since no one else was allowed to be near them. They would have been living on the outside of the village where their families would leave food for them. Friends, since their diseases makes them outcast in the society of that time, 
they must have longed to be healed and to be able to return to their families, their homes, their lives. Normally, no one came near the lepers. It wasn't wise even to talk with them. But Jesus broke convention and did talk with them. He took time and got involved with the least likely people. No one was beyond his compassion. He reached out and cared for all. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, Indeed, is a compassionate and wonderful God. Jesus took the leper's cry to heart, and rather than drawing near and touching them, as he did, the Lord Himself saw the need to heal them. He saw the need to reach out to them. He saw the need to give them hope. He saw the need to release his compassion on them. My dear brother, my dear sister, We are serving a loving God. God who always cares for his children. Not only that, but we are beginning to see how the love of God is. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, It is very, very important for you and I that as we prepare to enter this period of thanksgiving, the love of God is still calling upon us to understand that He's still with us. What a joyous optimism. When Jesus Christ is the source of our joy, no words can describe it. It is a joy inexpressible and glorious for these lepers. Because Christ is the answer to the, their sadness and discouragement, the discord, and also their rejection. Jesus took their discouragement your rejection upon himself and despondence out of their lives and replace them with optimism, hope, and compassion. My dear brother, my dear sister, if our hearts have been attuned to God through an abiding faith in Christ, the result will be a joyous optimism and good cheer as we prepare to enter into this Thanksgiving season. The reason because we know He loves us and nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When our confidence is in Him, discouragement gets crowded out. May that be true in your life during this Thanksgiving season so that you have every cause to celebrate His goodness, His love and His compassion for you all these years. 
especially from the beginning of this year till this day. God bless you for having the time to listen to his word. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving season and bye for now.